So I uh, went back at 11 this morning. I, I stopped at Iowa 80 last night, got some food this morning after my 10 hour was up. Um, we got the scale ticket and it was correct, but it was insane. It was 39.4 on my drives and 39.7 on my trailer axle. That's like, or no, 33, 33, four, five and 33, nine. And it was like 79,580 pounds. So we're legal, but that's the closest like I've ever been to being 34, 34. So pretty crazy. And it took three reworks to get it done. But we're good to go now. Uh, we got 535 miles to Kentucky. Um, I don't, we're supposed to be there at 5 a.m., but there's no way that's gonna work. Cause, Says so we'll get shut down. I know there's trash there. Don't give me any shit. 535 miles. Says so we'll be there at 10:41 Eastern time. And then, even if I did like an 8-2 split, eight hours from there would be 6:41. And I have to do a 30-minute break too. So we're gonna be late. And Walmart doesn't really like that. So we'll see how that plays out. All right, guys. We made it to Walmart DC this morning. We're backing into door 71 here. It's it's not, is it open? 68, 69, 70, 71. It's a straight back, bro. I thought it wasn't. All right, we're gonna wait on this yard jockey here. I guess I can just make a left here. It's kind of an offset. Not even really an offset, bro. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Cause I can't really, I and mean, I can do that, but it's quite an offset, and it's quite a ways to travel to do it back. See, that's why I wish the guard shack just gave you your number, cause then I could set up a side site. But now I gotta figure out. I'm gonna do this. So, hold on, let me go all the way down here. I guess I'll probably have to like whip it around and then work it in like that, I guess. I don't even know if there's enough room to turn around down there. going to the scale so I guess here we go we're gonna try to whip it down here down here I guess
go open up my doors and stuff. Now we just gotta bump it, and then we gotta drop it. It's the only, my only complaint about Walmart DCs is they always make you drop it, so. But what else can you do about it, right? These lines aren't very good, because I'm in, like, barely inside one, and then I'm on this line, but I think it's good enough. So we just gotta bump it here. Just like that. And now I'm gonna get out and do that, but we got another tight delivery. Um, we gotta go 100, or 200 miles to pick up this load. And then we gotta be in Toledo, Ohio by tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Um, and we're not even going to be picking this load up till four, four o'clock and then it's like 400 miles to Toledo. So I'm probably gonna have to do what I did exactly last night and that's take like an eight hour sleeper break, get up, go get into the dock and then, uh, do a two hour split. That's what I had to do last night cause that shipper took so damn long. There was like a day and a half on this load and then that shipper took like 10 hours to get that freaking trailer loaded. So, um. We're headed there now. It's just a drop and hook. I've actually been to this place before because the address sounded so familiar. I was like, when I looked at it on the map, I was like, yep, I went here before. It's just a drop and hook, so that makes it easier. But I haven't ate anything and it's already one o'clock today. So I'm probably gonna stop and get something to eat because I'm getting kind of hungry. I'm not like starving yet, but I'm just probably gonna stop here at some point. I also probably need to get fuel, so. Yeah, I don't know why the check engine light's on. Um, it doesn't give me any codes or anything, but I think my engine coolant sensor's going bad because it keeps telling me like low coolant, fill coolant, and like it's full. I can't even put more in there. Like it's way too full. So I think it might be that, I don't know. So I'll probably, if hopefully, I'm thinking there's a chance that from Toledo I'll get a load to like through Chicago and then I'll stop at the GP HQ and have them look at it. Otherwise, I'm probably gonna have to pull into a Loves or something and have them stick their diagnostic tool on it. But I don't have time right now, so I gotta go. And it, it's not red, so it's really not anything severe. And it would be flashing and like telling me like D-rate engine shutting off and stuff like that. So don't know what it is, but yeah. Anyways, 200 miles left. I don't know what I'm gonna stop and get for lunch, but I am gonna stop here, so. Well, this is the first time I think I've ever gotten scammed out of Loves. Um, I was, I bought like a hot dog and some chips and Loves had their chips on display and it was $1.99 a bag. And I should have looked at the weight, but I just like grabbed it because it looked like a pretty big bag. Um, and so I got the chips and I get out to the truck and like, bro, it's worse than Lay's. Like there's like barely any chips in it. I'm like, what the hell? Like Loves, come on. Like I figured Loves wouldn't do me dirty like that. That's why I didn't even look. Cause Loves normally just like, oh, they're like, in, like they're candy. Like they have like the little travel snacks. Those are good deals. Like that's pretty cheap. But yeah, the chips from Loves, they had good flavor. I got the kettle cooked barbecue. But yeah, no, I would uh, stay away from those. So, but it kind of makes sense because like the roller stuff is like two items for four dollars and fifty cents. Like, that's kind of expensive. You're paying almost two dollars and fifty cents for a hot dog, bro. That's way more. Like, I get it, but it's not like it's that good. So, anyways, we're gonna get back on the interstate here. We had our lunch. It was ten dollars for my lunch, bro. 10 freaking dollars for Love's food. That's insane. I'd go to McDonald's and get a cheeseburger and make chicken for like five bucks and a large Coke. But yeah, no more complaining. I gotta get going. So change of plans. I don't know if I said anything, but we're supposed to have a pickup in Tennessee going to Ohio, but that load got canceled because I can't make the appointment time and there was no room for movement. So we are now in Louisville, Kentucky, picking up a load going to all my exes live in Texas. Texas is the place I wanna be. I don't even know if that's the right lyrics. <laughs> we're headed to Texas. We haven't been to Texas since we were with CFI. I haven't gone to Texas with GP yet, but um, we're going to Texas and it's uh, pretty much Dallas is where we're delivering, so. I think I'm gonna stay in the middle lane for now because I think I gotta go straight, if I remember correctly. 
I'm not too sure, but yeah, we gotta go pick up, and then it's just a drop and hook here, thank God, and then our delivery is just a drop and hook as well, so should be pretty good. Come on, dude, look how much room's up in front of you. All right, we'll see you guys at the shipper. All right, so we're dropping it and in as November, so that's this lot right here. Hopefully there's a oh, spot. Doesn't look like there's very many spots here. All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this one right next to this Averitt. We got our tandems all the way to the rear, but I'm gonna go past and then out like so. Oh, I messed it up. Should have cut it just a little bit earlier. It's okay. I think we're good. We're just gonna have to fight it. Cause we're, yeah, we're good, but we have to get back under it. All right, this is what we're gonna do here. Pull up to the right. Like so, oh. She told me to hang it on my registration box, so I did. But it's on the passenger side, so, oh well. We gotta go to the shipping office and check in. Line our nose up with this other trailer here. About there will work. So that shipping facility was massive. Oh, there's a plane landing, that's cool. That's cool. That is freaking cool. All right, we're gonna watch this. Touchdown, let's see the smoke, there it is. Nailed it. That's smooth as butter, I need to speed up. I've been like holding my foot off the gas. Um, that was a huge facility though. And I ended up having to get the yard jockey to pull the trailer out of the hole because it was so freaking tight. I couldn't fit between. And I know some of you gonna be like, we well, need to lose weight. But nah, bro, it was like less than six inches on that driver's side between the trailer next to it. Like, if there's any guy that can fit in there, I wanna meet him. Well, I guess there's like this one guy. I don't really know his name, but he probably could fit in there. But it still wouldn't be very fun to jack up the landing gear with that much room. But we gotta take 65 down to Nashville. We're only gonna drive another 233 miles, which isn't great because that means we'll have 610 miles to cover tomorrow. And then we have to find parking in Dallas afterwards. But I think I should be able to probably bobtail and find parking. So that makes it a little bit easier because you can be a little more creative with where you park. So we'll see how it goes. Or if maybe i can just deliver it saturday morning since it's a 24 7 facility and it's all dropping hooks and just park on the outskirts of dallas that way because like even when i get parked tonight it's gonna be 9 35 so 10 hours after that means 7 35 and you got to figure almost eight o'clock because i have to do a 10 minute post trip and a 15 minute pre-trip every morning so that's that's literally eight o'clock so yeah so we'd be able to go at 8 a.m and then you know drive almost 11 hour like call it 10 and a half hours that's if yeah doubt i don't even know if i can make 610 miles tomorrow going through dallas and memphis uh, i'm not sure i'll have to talk to cornell in the morning it is what it is i mean it's it's a drop and hook like if needed i guess i don't have pc anymore so i can't advance the load just kidding i want to do that anyways but apparently when you advance the load at eight miles an hour average it's considered advancing the load so yeah, I don't like that. I think that's a stupid rule. Like if I'm driving eight miles an hour, I'm only making four bucks an hour. Like nobody's gonna be working for that. That's less than minimum wage. So I don't know how DOT can consider that advancing a load, but whatever. Anyways, we're gonna get on here. I don't know, I might stop in White House, Nash or Tennessee. Uh, they have a Taco John's at that loves and I don't really eat Taco John's very often. So normally when I pass through there, I'm like, oh, that sounds good. And it's almost, by the time I get there, I'll probably be, 7 38 o'clock because it's just barely north of uh, nashville so uh man that was uh i didn't even record it last night but uh i got like just north of nashville on 65 and there was a bad truck wreck i don't know if a steer tire gave out 
or what, but he went into like some trees and his whole cab was crushed and I'm pretty sure he didn't make it. Um, and then, uh, so we got through Nashville and we only had like an hour drive time left and I didn't want to mess with it because last time I went over on my drive time, I just pretty much got yelled at and it was out of my control. So, um, I just shut down as soon as I got on the other side of Nashville and found parking. And so we have 650 miles to cover today. Cornell says that I can park at this place overnight. I'm not too sure about that, but the Flying J that I stopped at last night, I really thought that I was gonna get hit because like, okay, it was the only place I could park. So like I had to, and it was a parking spot like in the middle, it wasn't on the ends. But this Flying J was so small that the only way that you could get into a spot is if you left a spot in between you and another driver to back in otherwise you would you couldn't like turn in close there wasn't enough room to travel out and bring it in right next to the other truck so i had a feeling that in the morning when people pulled out across from me they would hit my truck but nobody did so um we got out of there and uh with no scratches so i'm very thankful um but i was kind of worried that some idiot would like come find me come on car you're in a car bro like, what is this come on But yeah, so we're gonna go. Um, we at least are gonna drive three hours this morning before we stop, because we will need to do a 30 minute break to make our delivery today. Um, and then hopefully Cornell's right and I can just park there overnight, even if I need to do a 34, like they don't give me a load tomorrow. At least just have parking for the night, because I won't be there till like, well, it says 8.30, but still, trying to find parking in eight, at 8.30 in Dallas with only like 30 minutes of drive time. Even if you're bobtail, it's just not ideal. So, um, yeah. But anyways, we're gonna keep on keeping on. So I finally got a message on my thing saying after treatment system problem detected. So I called in and he's like, yeah, you have 30 minutes and then you're in D-rate and you can only do 55. And I was like, oh, that's great. So I'm going to this pilot here cause he wants me to go to like a Freightliner dealership or whatever. He's like, can you pull into that Loves? Which was like three miles back, but Loves is full. It's, I'm literally in Little Rock right now. So like, I looked at this pilot that says there's some parking left. So I got four miles to go. And with dev systems, it may not be fixed till next Monday because it's Friday. So I might be stuck here in Little Rock till Monday. And sometimes it might even take longer because they have to maybe order the part, so. I'm hoping I'm not broke down for too long because I really, huh, I really can't do that right now. I need to, I need to be driving to make more money because it's nice to have breakdown pay at 150 bucks a day, but that's not, that's not what I need. I need, I need quite a bit. And I know like if your truck's like broke down for like a week, they'll, uh, they'll get you back up to Joliet and they'll give you a new truck. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a D-rate uh, error code, so I. I mean, by the time I get back over to Freightliner, I'll probably already be in D-rate, so it's not good. I should have called the other day, but I don't know. It's just like, when that comes on, it could it can be anything, you know? Like, the like, last couple of nights, I've had to wake up because, like, it says my coolant's not high enough, so I just figured that was my coolant sensor, like, throwing a code, but I guess not. So, I mean, this truck does have almost 370,000 miles on it, so I should have... I should have figured it was something more, but yeah, we got 2.2 miles till we got to get off the interstate, and then uh, I'm hoping it's not a long time to fix it because that would not be good at all. Like, at all, I will keep you guys updated with what I hear. Come on, everything is a okay when you're riding with Jay. Keep those wheels turning and we do this every day Backing up a trailer, look at all the roads I've driven Come and ride with me, yeah, let me show you how I'm living Come on